I'm the Hornet King, and I remove incredible and insane wasp nests. Whether their nests are underground, in a house, in a tree, or even down a well, I'm the person crazy enough to extract them, and I do so with my trusty vacuum. In this video, I'll be removing a massive bald face hornet nest from the roof of a client's house. I'll also be adding another hornet nest to my hornet apartment complex. Check it out. Hey everyone, welcome to the Hornet King channel. This is the removal of a bald-faced hornet colony that decided to make its nest here on the roof of this client's house. These large bay windows here, the clients were starting to notice a lot of bald-faced hornets hitting that glass and they were afraid they were going to make their way inside, so they decided to have this nest removed. This nest was in Delaware, and I live in PA, so I did try to relocate this colony because I wanted to add it to my large apartment complex of bald-faced hornets on my barn. However, the thing died on its way home. Uh, it was pretty hot this day. I think it was like 95 degrees. And being up on the roof, that kind of sucks in the heat because the heat just, just radiates off that roof. Now, I do have a fear of heights, but luckily this roof was pretty well. It wasn't a super strong pitch up here, so I was able to be pretty comfortable removing this colony. So just getting my stuff set up. You guys don't often get to see too much of the locations of where I do my removals, so I was kind of happy that I was able to have this camera angle from down in the yard so you guys can get an idea what the entire scene looked like for this removal. So I did want to have one camera up close and that was able to get some good audio of the actual removal, plus it was able to get some really good images here. This nest was about the size of a basketball, maybe a little bit bigger in some areas, um, but that's just the envelope. Now the envelope is the paper that covers the comb, and whenever I'm doing these removals, a lot of the adults are in between the layers of comb with inside the envelope. So I have to pack, I have to pat down and tap on the side of the nest, so that way it gets them all stirred up so they come outside and start swarming, and when they try to do that, they get sucked up into the vacuum nozzle. You'll notice here some of them may fly past the nozzle, but they just kind of swarm around and then they fly right back to the entranceway and then I vacuum them up from there. Some other ones you'll see flying around that are coming from the outside going towards the vacuum nozzle are ones coming back from foraging. And they could be out, you know, a half hour, 40 minutes away. And when they come back, unbeknownst to them, their whole nest is being removed. So you'll see them fly in kind of nonchalant. They're not swarming. They're just coming back to give back into the nest. And unbeknownst to them, they get sucked up into the vacuum. So I do just kind of just take my time and just suck off some of the envelope and things and try to expose a little bit of comb and little bits at a time. And that way, if there are a bunch of them still hunkered down in between the layers of comb, I don't disturb them all in one shot where there's no more of just like a small funnel of an entranceway for them to come out of that I can easily get them from. Now they have a whole big opening that they'll fly out of and I'm constantly having to play catch up trying to catch them all at the same time. But for the most part, I vacuumed a significant amount of them. You couldn't really see it in the beginning because the vacuum nozzle was kind of in the entranceway and they were kind of just flying directly in there. It feels like you're sucking up pennies. Like if you ever like vacuumed out your car, that feeling like when you suck up a bunch of pennies in the vacuum, that's what it feels like sucking up bald-faced hornets. So it is a little bit deceiving right here because it looks like that there's like hardly any adults left, but they are, there are quite a few that are in between the layers of comb still and ones that are up at the top where the nest connects to the soffit. Once I pull that down, you'll see a bunch start flying around and that's because, and you'll see some dropping out from behind the nest too. So they're kind of trying to stay protected back there. So I start to try to pull this down. As soon as I do, I try to start vacuuming up from the back side. And there's quite a few that just fell out the back and start start flying around. And this is strongly edited, so the removal process takes about 45 to 50 minutes. But nobody's going to sit here and watch me vacuum up envelope and one wasp at a time for 40 to 50 minutes. So I just bag up the comb here and I just put it into a plastic bag so that way I could relocate it. However, since it was so hot, it didn't, it didn't really stand a chance, especially the long drive that I had to go back home. 
Uh, so I just tossed it down here to Dan, and that's the homeowner. Uh, he's a veteran. He's a really cool guy, and I really enjoyed chatting with him. I dropped it here on the bush and then just asked him to put it in the shade for the time being. And he actually tossed me up a damp rag. I wanted to be able to clean off the siding for him. So I spent a few minutes just vacuuming up the foragers that were coming back and unbeknownst to them, the nest has been removed. I vacuum houses for a living. You need your house back? And then I just take that damp rag and what here I caught one and smushed it up because it was uh, already turned unplugged the vacuum. Uh, I just took that damp rag and just wiped off as much of the envelope as I could. All right, so after getting the nest home, this is quite a collection of nests I have in that bin in that bag. And then right behind me is actually my barn with my Hornet apartment complex. You guys can swarm, but I'm doing this down here anyway. Well, it's just because those nests are relatively new there and they're still exposed. They don't have any envelope built around them yet. So they act crazy for the first like maybe four days to a week depending on how long it takes them to build envelope around the comb. After that, they're totally fine. I could walk around there without any problem at all. Uh, so this is the nest I just removed, and this nest was pretty much rotten by the time I brought it home. It was all soggy and things, so I just tossed it out into the field, and that way any, pretty much any wild animals can eat that. And that goes for any uh, vultures, or um, we have turkey vultures around here. Um, possums, skunks, or whatever will eat that. I don't really want to feed that to my girls because it already started to turn and there was a lot of broken larvae and things just from the heat. They start to break down. Um, this is another nest that I tried to relocate. You'll see that there's duct tape on the entranceway and usually I do that to try to trap as many of the adults inside. That way nobody escapes so there's more to work on the nest than once I actually relocate it. Well, you can see the white caps, the silk caps, are all discolored because larvae started to fall apart in there after the, from the heat. So that also gets tossed into the field. Now the, the chickens can go down there and peck at that if they really want to, but I just don't want to feed it to them personally because I feel like they deserve to have live food to eat and not something that started to turn from the heat. So this nest was one I was able to relocate. I had removed that. It was the last one I'd removed for this day. And um, so there was, everything was still alive inside. There were still live hornets in there. Um, which these are technically aren't hornets. These are uh, called bald-faced hornets, which is a layman's term, but they're actually an aerial nest building yellow jacket, Dolica vespula maculata. Some pretty envelope that I pull off there. And when I start pulling off the top here, you'll notice there's a lot of adults up inside there. And they like to kind of like hunker down in all those little chasms and, and combs and things up inside. So all those ones that fly out, they're going to go right around that nest. They're going to linger here, and they're going to swarm. And then when I put that nest and gl hot glue it up to the platform, they will fly up there and then reconsolidate up on the nest itself. Bald-faced hornets and German yellow jackets are the only two yellow jacket species that I've actually put side by side on two different colonies, and they've actually accepted each other. I haven't done it with European hornets yet, or Eastern yellow jackets or anything. But as a study, I want to put all these nests here so that way I can study their behavior and interactions with each other. There's a common misconception that, that bald-faced hornets are territorial, and if there's a nest nearby, that other wasps won't build near that nest, and that's just not true. Um, I've seen bald-faced hornets be in the same tree, naturally, um, and then when I relocate nests, I can put them 10 feet apart, and they never bother each other. They don't go over and attack each other. So I just take some hot glue and then put it on the back of the comb, and then just hold it here. Now it looks like I only held it here for a few seconds because of the, the beautiful editing tricks that I do. Oh, magically I'm done. Now that took me about five minutes of holding that there in the midst of that swarm so that glue could somewhat set. And even then I had to come back over and re-glue certain spots because it started, it was still soft and the weight of that comb was starting to pull it down. And you'll see here I have to like get a, try to flick at one of the, the wasps that starts trying to chew the glue right here. I try to pull her away, but I zoom in on her. And here at the top, you'll see her kind of chewing at it still and trying to get the, the, uh, the glue apart. So she may have been from one of the other colonies and just was kind of disrupted by the whole thing, and this was something foreign to her. And 
just getting some close-up shots here with my phone um, and just seeing the amount of chasms and things in between these layers of combs just so cool to see that and there were a lot of adults on this new nest that I put down here and even the ones coming from the nest behind it that they already started to put envelope on you can see that there's a lot of activity coming from that nest into this comb because there still weren't this many adults inside of this nest when I put it here so they're all kind of going together and making a new large colony out of this situation which is so cool to see and they eventually ended up adop adopting that new comb as the main structure then just so cool to see that up close and this worm is crazy but it's it's really neat to see how they interact with each other and again after about four days once the envelope was completely covered these comb I never had any problem with them swarming me after the fact they just can they they would mind their own business after this point but they do have good memory so once you do relocate them it does take them a few days to calm down uh, with activity around the nest so I do try to like avoid the areas at least stay back about 20 to 30 yards from those areas and they don't bother the chickens or the squirrel or anything coming around this area but i do try to just usher anybody coming into my onto my property to stay away from certain points until the nests are adapted and this is the last bit of cone that i had put on for this apartment complex as i call it so there are five different bald-faced hornet nests here. Now they all decided to go to the one nest. They all pretty much stayed around on the other combs and built on them a little bit, but they mainly consolidated into one comb. It seems to be that's what they decide to do. So even though I don't really get to show you guys too much of the nest being torn apart, this is when I give the nest to the girls, uh, the chickens, and the turkey, and give them some of the sustenance from the removals.